Okay guys, we're going to continue on here and we're going to install our flywheel. Let me go ahead and rotate this towards you so that you can see the keyway here. Let's zoom in there. Now with that help position there, our keyway here, and this is our key that's going to go in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate this sideways so that we'll see what it looks like once it's installed and see how it protrudes. What we don't want is we don't want it sticking out like this and then trying to lower our flywheel on here and basically knocking it out. The other thing we don't want to do is we don't want to have it where it's kicked out at the bottom because it might wedge, it might try to wedge itself out as well. What we really want is a real nice even uh, assembly here. Just real light taps with the hammer there. And can you see how the keyway is nice and in line there? Okay, the other thing per service manual is we want this really good and dry. We don't want any grease on here at all. Take some contact cleaner, carburetor cleaner. The other thing on the flywheel itself, if you can see in here, is we want to make sure that this, the taper on this is really dry as well. We do not want any grease on there. Okay, so now we just take this and be intentional. When I, when I go to put this on, I already know where my keyway is, and so I'm already halfway trying to line it up. What I don't want to do is try and put it on here and be rotating it to find it because um, I might damage it or scratch it. So I'm just going to lower that down on here. And you'll notice here that I'm not moving very far and it fell right into place. And now when I rotate it, it's rotating the whole crankshaft because the key is caught. Does that make sense? Okay, the other thing that our manual tells us to do on this particular model is it tells us to put some oil on the threads. We could put it on the thread of the crankshaft, or in this case, I'll just put a dab on here. Um, you guys that are standing here, if we don't oil this, uh, what happens to our torque value? It's going to be off. It's going to be off, right? All right? So this is where I'm going to take advantage of getting some help here. We went ahead, and we have a digital torque wrench here. And this calls for 55 foot-pounds on an aluminum flywheel. So I'm going to, since this is a single faster deal and it doesn't tell me to do it multiple steps, but for practice, we're going to go ahead and cut that down in about half. And uh, we'll just say we're going to do 30. And the nice thing about cutting torque in half is it takes a little more time, I understand that, but it allows us to just feel things as they come together and not that they're going to be stripped. So let's go ahead and wrap around there. Look understood. Thank you. So what Art was noticing here, since I'm going to be turning this way, this way. Okay. he's going in the opposite direction here so that I can torque this down. Uh, he was making caution that the belt didn't actually go around the studs or catch something that it shouldn't. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm high enough above. I'm a big fan of extensions, and I'm above everything, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead here. Notice how I'm using the wrench. My hand is actually on the spot indicated for the torque wrench. I'm not holding it here, and I'm not holding it up here. So I'm going to go ahead. Okay, this one's a vibration one. You can see I was aiming for 30. I hit 30.7. So we'll just go ahead and go to full torque now at the 55. And it felt good. If I was having a problem with my keyway right there, would I notice it? Oh, yeah. There we go.